Hello. Welcome to room nine, our region's largest classroom. My name is Mrs. Hewson and I teach kindergarten at Hancock Place Elementary in the Hancock Place School District, which is located in South St. Louis County. But today I am here to teach you second grade social studies. And don't worry, because even if you're not in social studies, I'm sure that if you stick around, you'll learn something fun and interesting. So today we will be learning how to recognize and evaluate continuity and change over time. So basically, that means that we're going to be discussing how things change in our life and how things change around us. We will discuss how and why modes of transportation change, how and why communication changes and has changed over time. We will recognize and evaluate how inventors are important and how inventions are important and how they have influenced our daily life. Things are always changing, always. They always have, and you know what? They'll continue to do so. When I think about how things were, even when I was a young child, maybe even your age, everything is different. Well, not everything, but most things are pretty different. And when I realize how many things are different, it makes me think, I wonder why things are always changing. And when I think about even further in the past, like before me, like maybe even when my grandparents were kids, I think about how different things must be for them. Hmm. What I have noticed is that the reason most things change is to make our life a little better or a little easier. So here are some examples that I came up with. People, people change, even you. Even you have changed. Think about that. When you were first born, you were a baby and you couldn't even feed yourself, could you? Now you're growing and you're a child, but you can get dressed on your own and you can feed yourself. You might even have some chores to do around your house to help other people. And you know what? You're not finished changing. You will continue to change. Eventually you'll be a teenager and then a grown up. Think about your parents. Do your parents do the same things as you? Do they look the same as you? Probably not. They're probably much taller, right? Hey, here's another example of something that has changed over time. Communication. And what I mean by communication is how we talk to other people, how we get a hold of other people. Like, for example, I have family that lives in another state. Now, a long time ago, if I wanted to communicate with somebody who lived very far away, I would have to send a letter that I wrote, or I might have to send something called a telegram. But now, if I want to communicate with them, all I have to do is pick up the phone and call them, right? Something else that's changed a lot is transportation, how we get from one place to another, okay? So when I think about transportation a long time ago, I know that they used to have to ride horses to get everywhere. They didn't have cars, they didn't have automobiles, so they rode horses, and if they had to travel with um, other things like maybe furniture or if they needed to take a lot of something somewhere, they probably couldn't just pack it on the back of a horse, right? So they used a carriage or a buggy and they would hook that to the horse to travel and take those things to other places. Okay. Now, when I think about traveling by horse, horses are nowhere near as fast as a car, right? So it probably took them a long time to travel. And over time, other things were invented like the train. And the train helped to travel go a little faster. And they were able to travel further distances. But you know what? Even a train couldn't get them across an ocean, couldn't, 
put it. No. So it even continued to change. And the next thing I knew, airplanes, right? Then airplanes came, helicopters, airplanes, and jets. And those allowed us to start traveling over the water, okay? There's also boats as well. So lots of things have been invented or created to help make us be able to travel a little easier or to use different modes of transportation to get to different places, okay? Something else that I think of that has changed a lot over time, and this one's really interesting to me, is toys, right? Because I think about the toys that my parents played with. They've told me a lot about them. And they didn't have nearly as many toys as we had. They used to play with jacks on the playground or jump ropes on the playground. And we still have those, but I think about the toys that I had when I was a kiddo. And I had things like, um, pound puppies, and I had things like the Nintendo. Yeah, so the original Nintendo came out when I was a kid, and I loved to play that. And now when I think about toys, I think, well, my son loves to play with Legos and Transformers, and he loves to play video games, all kinds of video games. And you know what? His video games look a lot different than the video games that I played when I was a kid. Something else that has changed and evolved over time are inventions. So think about when you have to do something and the job is pretty hard, you could brainstorm and come up with something to make that job a little easier. So a lot of inventions have been created over time to help make our jobs a little easier and things that we do a little easier. So I actually have a book that I want to read to you today. And it's going to talk to us, or it's going to teach us a little bit about community helpers, but it's also going to show us community helpers then, meaning long ago in the past, and community helpers now, okay? And the jobs that they did in the past look a lot different than what they do now, even though they're goal is pretty much the same. They had to use different tools and different materials to do their job. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and read this story by um, Bobby Coleman, Community Helpers Then and Now. This story, this book was published by uh, Crabtree Publishing Company, and it they have given us permission to read it today. So thank you, Crabtree. All right, Community Helpers then and now. So community helpers, what are community helpers? Those are people who have a job in the community that helps other people. So if we look at this picture, we can see um, a firefighter. Okay, he is considered a community worker. And I also can see a mechanic. So a mechanic is someone who fixes cars. This is a nonfiction book, so it does have um, on the first page, it kind of gives us a glimpse of what the book is going to be about, what information we will find in this book. So it says, what is in this book? Um, community helpers, trade workers long ago, trade workers today, construction workers, school helpers, food and farm workers, medical helpers, first responders, firefighters, police officers, and then there's pages to learn more and words to know and the index. Community helpers. A community is a place where many people live and work together and share buildings, services, and laws. Community helpers are people who make communities cleaner, safer and better. Name some community helpers that you see below. Hmm. If I'm looking at this page, I can see a doctor and a nurse. I see construction workers, 
some lawyers and some businessmen and women. So these are all people that work in the community to make it a better, safer, cleaner place. Community helpers long ago. In the past, there were not as many kinds of community helpers as there are today. Some helpers, such as store owners, supplied people with important things they needed. Some drove wagons. So remember when I was telling you about the horse and wagon or buggy or carriage? That's what that looks like. Right? Community helpers called trade workers were very important because they made things that people needed. Okay, so this can also be called a stagecoach. So if you look up here, it says stagecoach drivers took people from town to town and also delivered the mail. Hmm, who delivers our mail now? Do you see a stagecoach rolling down your street to deliver the mail? No, we have postal workers and they drive the mail trucks. This picture down here is a metal worker and he made pots, pans, cups, and candle holders. And over here, this woman owned a clothing store in a city. She made the clothes and then sold them. Okay, how many of you make clothes and sell your own clothes? Or how many of you even make your own clothes? Not very often. Most of the time we go to the store to buy our clothes now, right? Trade workers long ago. Before there were machines, trade workers made everything by hand using simple tools. Carpenters, wheelwrights, harness makers, and blacksmiths were some trade workers in old communities. So for example, you can see in the picture, here's a horseshoe. Blacksmiths made horseshoes from iron to protect the hooves of horses and oxen. Blacksmiths also made the metal parts of the carriage wheels. So here's a picture of a blacksmith making the pieces for the carriage wheel. Wagons were repaired in this shop. So now we don't have a wagon repair shop, we have a mechanic, right? And harnesses for the horse and saddles for the horse. Harness makers used leather to make saddles and harnesses for the horses. Wheelwrights, made wagon wheels from wood and iron. Trade workers used simple tools like these. And coopers made barrels, buckets, and other containers from wood. Carpenters made furniture from wood and they helped build homes. So some of that is the same as today. Let's see what it looks like today. So trade workers today. Trade workers today are still important community helpers, but what they make and how they do it may be different from how trade workers did it long ago. In the past, for example, wagon repair workers fixed wagons, and today, mechanics fix cars. Trades, trades workers today still use some simple tools, but they also use new kinds of machines to do their work. This mechanic is changing a flat tire. In the past, parts of wagons were made by hand. Today, cars are made in factories. Machines are used to make the parts and put them together. This carpenter is using an electric saw to cut wood. They didn't have electric saws long ago. So that's something that's newer. This trade person is a welder. Welders join materials such as metals or plastics together. This welder uses her laptop to record information about her work. There were no electricians in the past because electricity had not yet been invented. This electrician is fixing some wires on a hydro pole. Do you know which trade workers have worked at your home and why are they important community helpers? So have you ever had someone come to your home to do a trade? Maybe your shower had a leak and you had to call a plumber. Or maybe you had a light stop working in your house and you needed to have an electrician come and fix it. 
Or maybe you had construction workers come out and put a new roof on your house. So trade workers do a lot of things for us. That's why they're important community helpers. Construction workers. Construction workers are trades workers who build homes, offices, schools, hospitals, and many other buildings. They also build roads and bridges. They use many kinds of tools and machines like power drills, cranes, bulldozers, and cement trucks. Power drills make holes quickly. Cranes lift objects to high places. Cement trucks make concrete to use in building homes and roads, and bulldozers move dirt. So here's a picture of some of those big machines that construction workers use. Builders in the past. Long ago, there were very few machines. So builders had to use simple tools like hammers, saws, and axes. It took a long time to construct a building. After machines were invented, tall buildings could be built pretty quickly. So if you look in this picture, long ago, homes were built using hand tools like these that you see in the picture. And in big cities, about 100 years ago, builders constructed skyscrapers using steel, concrete, and glass. The construction workers of the past did not wear personal protective equipment. Whoa, that's a little scary. What safety gear do construction workers wear today? Well, I know for a fact they wear hard hats. Can you think of any other safety gear that construction workers would wear? Yeah, safety goggles. Yeah, gloves. You guys are awesome. School helpers. Most of the people who work at your school are teachers, but some school workers help you in other ways. The principal is the head of the school or the leader of the school. The librarian shows you how to find the books that you need and also instills the love of reading. How many teachers work at your school? Oh, okay, you go to kind of a small school, so there's only a few. Oh yeah, you have a lot of teachers. So the school where I work, there's a lot of us. We have a lot of teachers. How does a school nurse help you? Do you have a school nurse at your school? How does she help you? Oh, you have, okay. You have two nurses at your school, wow. Who helps students cross the street? Do you know what this person is called? Yeah, a crossing guard, very good. Who drives them to school in a bus? You see this picture? School bus driver. Who were the helpers? Well, long ago, many schools had only one room and one teacher. Not only did teachers plan the lessons and teach their students, they also had to keep the school clean. Students helped them sweep the floor, wash the blackboard, and bring in water from the well. The parents of the students paid the teacher's salary. Well, that's pretty interesting. So at my school, it's my job to write my lesson plans, and it's my job to teach the students and to keep them safe, but I don't have to clean my own classroom. We have custodians that help us with that. And if something breaks in my building, I don't have to fix it. We have maintenance crew that does that. And I have a principal at my school and I have a nurse at my school and I even have cafeteria workers to help prepare food for the students. But long ago, I have a feeling the students had to bring their lunch every day. And it sounds like the teacher had to do almost all of the work. Who cleans your classroom? Do you guys have custodians at your school? Or does your teacher clean the classroom? Now I do keep my classroom tidy and my students do help me. But at the end of the day, I don't have to worry about sweeping the floors. All right, next, food and farm workers. Next to air and water, food is the most important thing we need to stay alive. Agricultural workers or farmers grow the food we eat. 
the farms send some of the food to factories where it can be made into different kinds of foods. The foods are then sold in supermarkets. Many people help get food from farms to our tables. Who are these helpers? Well, let's learn about them. Farmers grow the food we eat, such as corn. Workers in the factories prepare and package foods such as bread. Supermarket workers keep the food fresh for us to take home and drivers deliver the food to those stores where we buy it. So a lot of people have to help in order for us to get the food from the farm to our table. But do you know what? It was not the same long ago. Farming long ago, in the past, most people got their food from gardens they planted next to their homes. People also raised chickens, pigs, and one or two horses and cows. Some farmers had large fields where they grew corn or wheat. Farm helpers were often family members like the children above collecting pumpkins. So here's a picture of a family and they are working on their own farm. They're harvesting pumpkins. Do you have a garden at your home? I do not. How do you help care for it if you do? Do you go out and water the garden? Do you pick the vegetables or the fruits? Do you help your parents with grocery shopping? Oh good, I'm so glad that you're helpful. What about cooking? Do you help cook at home? Yeah, great. What kind of foods do you like to cook? That's my favorite. Oh, yum. Now you're making me hungry. Medical helpers. Medical helpers are nurses, dentists, and many kinds of doctors who treat different body parts such as eyes or teeth. The pharmacist at your drugstore is another important helper because he or she gives you the medicine you need to get well. Medical helpers long ago. In the old days, the same doctor that treated your illness also looked after your teeth and your eyes. He often traveled from one small community to another to help sick people. In those days, people did not know that germs caused many diseases. In fact, people thought that taking too many baths could make them sick. Doctors often passed along diseases because they did not wash their hands or the instruments or tools that they used. Oh, I'm very happy that we know that germs can make us sick now. First responders. First responders are emergency workers who are the first to respond or act in emergencies. An emergency is a dangerous situation that happens suddenly First responders include police officers, ambulance drivers, paramedics, and firefighters. In emergencies, 911 operators receive calls from people who may need help. Then they send emergency workers to where they are needed. Well, it was a lot different long ago. There was no emergency help. In the olden times, there were no telephones or emergency numbers to call. There were no first responders either. When there was an emergency, people helped one another. In big cities, there were hospitals, but their ambulances were pulled by horses. So if you were hurt long ago, your neighbors would have been who helped you. Firefighters. Fires can start quickly. Firefighters help fight fires and rescue people and animals. They put out fires that start in buildings. They also fight forest and bushfires. Firefighters today drive big trucks and use water from fire hydrants to put out fires. Fire hydrants can be found in many places around towns and cities. Long ago, people used candles for light and fireplaces for cooking and heating their homes. Open flames made accidental fires very common. In those days, there were no fire trucks or firefighters, so buckets of water were passed along lines of people to put out the flames of a fire. After cars were invented, firefighters drove fire trucks with pumps, which sprayed water on the fires. So that's kind of how that changed through the years. That's interesting. Right. Last page, police officers. 
Police officers protect people in towns and cities. They patrol or drive regularly through neighborhoods as well as along highways to watch for people who are breaking the law. They also help people who need help. Well, long ago, some criminals were locked up in jail wagons like this. So it sounds like we've had police officers for a really long time, but they just look a little different now because this police officer has been called to someone's home and she has a badge and um, I go a dispatch walkie talkie and a car with lights. But this is what they had to drive around. Mm -hmm. All right, the end on that story. So it is so interesting to me to see how things have changed over time. So long ago is in the past, right? And things that are right now are called the present, okay? So I actually have some pictures that I would like to look at with you. And I want you to tell me if it's in the past or the present, okay? So I have a picture of a horse and wagon. Is that in the past? or the present, right, that is the past. And what about a car? Exactly, that's the present, that, we have those right now, don't we? Um, <laughs> look at this, this is a telephone. Do we have telephones that look like that now? No, that's from the past. What we have now are cell phones. So this is the present. Okay, now these last two pictures I'm going to show you, I want you to look at them and see how they have changed over the years. So here is a TV that's from the past. Do you see how that looks? It has knobs on it to change the channel. And here is what a TV looks like now. We have nice big flat screen TVs, right? So those have changed a lot over time. And this is interesting too. This is what computers used to look like. Oh, right. And now we have computers that look like this. So that is kind of how computers have changed over time. All right, so as you can see, things are always changing. They've always have, they probably always will. And most of the time those changes help us to do things a little easier, more efficiently. I wonder if maybe you will be a person who invents the next thing that can change the world or make our lives a little easier. I don't know, maybe so. I just wanna let you guys know that I had so much fun learning about then and now, the past and present with you today. And I hope that you will come back and join me again next week. That's all for today. Bye friends. in Room 9 is made possible with support of Bank of America, Dana Brown Charitable Trust, Emerson, and viewers like you.